Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and today I'm bringing you the 1700X. So we did the 1800X, um, obviously these are both Ryzen 7 CPUs, but I wanted to check out the 1700X as well, and I will be doing a showdown in a few days time with the 70, 1700X going up against another Broadwell E CPU. But today I just wanted to talk about something I've seen loads of comments about and people telling me to do and that is to test a Ryzen um, 7 CPU with SMT disabled. So let's talk about that briefly. So what is SMT? So it stands for a simultaneous multi-threading and it's um, pretty much like Intel's hyper-threading. Uh, it means that there's basically two threads uh, per core. So that's why when it comes to these CPUs, they say they are eight cores, 16 threads. If you disable SMT, it will just mean they're eight cores, eight threads. And that's basically um, all it is. Now, I'll, I'll quote from WCCF Tech. They say, testing data suggests that AMD's Ryzen 7 eight core parts actually perform better in a number of games with simultaneous multi-threading disabled a finding that's reminiscent of past Windows scheduling issues that may need a patch to be resolved. So that's very interesting there. Uh, obviously, uh, once that patch comes, it'll be very good and it will pretty much make this video irrelevant. But, it, but as of right now, um, this is a good point to raise. So let's talk briefly about overclocking. Now, if you watch my other video, which I suggest you do, you'll realize that I, um, you'll remember, I should say, that my 1800X went up to... 4 gigahertz and I couldn't get it to go higher and that was the same case with the 1700X and that falls perfectly into what uh, AMD have said that most people will get between 3.9 and 4.1 gigahertz on all 8 cores with their Ryzen 7 CPU so that makes sense. There's a lot of people out there spreading a whole bunch of false information about these crazy overclocks they get but honestly um, I've checked this with Steve from Hardware Unboxed and Brian We've been chatting heaps, comparing all our data, and it seems pretty consistent. And I've looked at a whole bunch of other uh, tech YouTubers out there, and they're all getting sort of similar type things, including Wendell the Great as well, and other people. Um, so yeah, that's this just seems like these guys like to sit at about four gigahertz on average on all eight cores. Now let's talk about the uh, specs of the test rig, and then we'll get into some uh, benchmarking. So, uh, motherboard-wise, I'm using this guy right here. So it's the Aorus Gaming 5 uh, X370. Very, very solid motherboard. Uh, I'm really liking it. Steve from Hardware Unbox also quite likes it too. And, uh, yeah, this one is quite decent. I don't really have any issues with it. And before you guys ask, because I know a lot of you commenting about it, it was fully updated. I made sure I did all of that. But, yeah, I seem to get pretty good results coming out of this guy. A lot, a lot of other people out there have had quite a few nightmares when it comes to some of their X370 motherboards. So without further ado, let's jump into the benchmarking and see what the 1700X does uh, with SMT enabled and SMT disabled. I'll be showing more of these uh, benchmarks when I do my next showdown. But let's just get into the handful I'm going to show today. So first we do Cinebench. This is obviously to do with productivity. And you see that uh, with SMT disabled, there's a big drop down there. Obviously it can't you know, utilize as much. Um, so that makes sense. Exactly what you'd see. But the games are where it differs. So in Shadow of Mordor, we see a small bump up there at 1080p, and then it's pretty much identical uh, through the other resolutions with SMT disabled. Not really much to say there, pretty much what, um, they're, they're more or less the same. However, when we go into Dirt Rally, that changes big time. Look at the difference there. With SMT disabled, it gets 127 frames a second at 1080p compared to 106 before. That is a huge jump up there. At 1440p, we also see a bit of a bump up. And at 4K, it's pretty much the same within the margin of error. So, yeah, that's a huge change in Dirt Rally. And moving over to the last one I'll do in this video, Deus Ex, uh, Mankind Divided. You see a 2 FPS dump, uh, jump up at uh, 1080p, and then it's pretty much the same um, along the 1440p and 4K benchmarks, and I'm pretty sure that is because of GPU uh, bottlenecking with the GTX 1080. It's just such a beast of a benchmark to run. So very interesting there. 
What does that tell us? Well, it, it, it proves what a lot of people are saying, that it's only in some games will you see any sort of benefit. But honestly, um, I, I don't think this is like a real world thing. No one's going to be like, oh, I'm doing my productivity stuff. I got to go, you know, restart the computer and turn SMT on and then, oh, okay, I'm going to go do some gaming. I better restart the computer and turn it back off again. No one's actually going to be doing that, but it's interesting to note and it's quite interesting to see that um, there is some work still to be done. Hopefully that patch does go through at some point and uh, fixes this uh, issue so that those results are consistent with SMT on, SMT off. Um, you will get the same results regardless, which is probably what we will see in the future. Now, one last thing I wanted to mention is there seems to be a lot of misinformation going around the community right now in regards to these Ryzen CPUs and how people are benchmarking them. Now, I've seen some tech reviewers, you probably know who I'm talking about, um, doing all their benchmarks at 4K. You know, why would you do that? The, of course it's going to make them look the same, but you could have a little probably i3 in there and it would look the same as what these guys are doing because it's a full-on GPU bottleneck. Steve made a great video about this. I'll leave it in uh, the description down below to check it out and he covers all of this in much more detail. Then I'm seeing some other tech reviewers uh, doing it at 720p, which you think, great, yeah, that'll really show the CPU differences. Yet the, the differences between their Intel counterparts are very, very small, and everyone's going, hey, why, why are these results so much different, so different to everybody else's? Myself, Brian, and Steve have tried to replicate some of these, and we just can't do it, so I don't know what's going on. There is so much misinformation and craziness going on right now and it seems like there's nothing, um, a, a lot of people are fudging a lot of the results. Now I know mine are consistent because I have compared them with Steve's and Brian's. We've been doing this uh, like um, Skype convo, group conversation, and we've just been um, sharing all our results and comparing them to each other, and all of ours are the same. So on all three of our channels, I can 100% say that our results are fair, honest, and accurate. But plenty of these other tech reviewers should really feel ashamed of themselves because they're really misrepresenting things and they are putting out basically fake news, like fake results. And it's not helpful to anyone. It's giving people the wrong idea. And that's not to say I'm picking on Ryzen because I was very fair and I do recommend it to a lot of people out there and I'm very fair to both Intel and AMD. But let's, let's be honest, guys. you got to take these results, these weird results that some people get that are way different to every other tech review, you have to disregard them because obviously they're doing something wrong. They have, maybe they're fudging it or something like that and stick to the um, vast amount of results. You know, there's like the, the video a while back of someone saying, I've got 999 results saying, you know, one thing and one result saying the other thing. And the person goes, well, I just want that one result. It makes no sense. Go with what everybody else is saying. And that's how I'm going to end this video. So as always, subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already to catch my 1700X uh, showdown against another Broadwell E CPU, which will be coming up very soon. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.